The Texas Parks and Wildlife Television Series is supported in part by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, conserving the wild things and wild places of Texas thanks to members across the state. Additional funding is provided by Toyota. Your local Toyota dealers are proud to support outdoor recreation and conservation in Texas. Toyota, let's go places. Coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. You could feel it tense up as soon as you touched it, and it was, it was intimidating. One, two, three. Good job. The Kemp's Ridley's, this is a species that was nearing an extinction event. Bracken Cave is the largest single concentration of mammals on Earth. Texas Parks and Wildlife a television series for all outdoors. Oh my goodness. Nervous? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Great honor to be with you today. Our 62nd Game Warden Academy graduation. Let's give it one more round of applause. Our lives are made up of a series of moments. Some stay with us. And a few will change our lives forever. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I made it. I'm so incredibly proud of you. That's just incredible, son. I love you. I love you, too. Thank you. <laughs> I did three. I'm shooting several because somebody always blinks. For Zach Stevenson, this is a momentous day. He is now officially a Texas game warden. But this day might never have happened, if not for one weekend a decade earlier. Where's this one coming from? It's gonna be number one. It's gonna go out straight away. Pull. Very good, good shot. It tested like everything, like how much, if he knew how to lead and if he knew where it was coming from and followed through with it. I did all right. Good. When I was a kid, you know, I, I wanted to be outside and I wanted to be out hunting and I, I, I was raised by a single mother, so I told my mom I wanted to go hunting and she didn't know where to start. She didn't know the first thing about hunting. Parents and all that, I want to, first off, I want to thank y'all. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun this weekend. What we do is we offer a program we can furnish the firearm, we can furnish the ammunition, we furnish the place to hunt. All they have to bring with them is desire to go hunting and enjoy the outdoors. Gentlemen, y'all get in line. Get something to eat. She had a friend that was a part of the Texas Youth Hunter Program, and that's how we found out about it. What time are we getting up? We're getting up at 5 o'clock, like normal time. 5 o'clock in the, in the morning? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't for tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> no. 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> It's going to be deep at first, but it'll end up being about this deep when we get to walking. So just stay in single file. For me, because I, I did grow up relatively close to Houston, I just I didn't get to go out a whole lot. It's something that he wants to do. That's something he can do forever. Get him. They've started out with the gun safety. All right. That was actually pretty fun. It wasn't near as bad as I was thinking it was going to be. While we were on that youth duck hunt, we actually had um, a, a large group of game wardens come out and talk to us. And it was the, the first time I'd ever heard about what a game warden does. That was the day it clicked for me. That was what I wanted to do. And uh, pretty much since that day, I just started working towards it. The moments that make up our lives are interconnected. One leads to the next eventually shaping who and what we are. So you're volunteering to go first, right? <laughs> Have you ever seen an alligator? Oh yeah, I've seen them all the time, yeah, but there's a difference in seeing one and then handling one. 
Watch this thing, because this thing will come up and get you. All right. There you go. Hold on to it. quick. You got to be quick. Push it down when he's flush on the ground, then curl your fingers okay. up and lock it in those jaw okay. That way, if it's pushed down, you know that mouth is closed. Okay. There you go. Work it underneath there. All right, whenever y'all are ready. One, two, three. Good job. I believe it's the finest training in, in a law enforcement academy in the country. Just because we're down to the last three weeks, don't unplug. By this point, you've got to own it. They go through conservation law enforcement. They go through standard law enforcement. Good. Yeah, what's your question? Wildlife identification. So that's going to be the, the Guadalupe bass, which is the state fish. You know, how to deal with hunters and anglers. I mean, really the gamut. We're giving the cadets a basic understanding of swift water awareness, what the water does, how to react. All right, go ahead. Right step, step. Right step, step. And it's an eye opener for them. You look at it and you think, oh, it doesn't look that bad. Get him up, get him up. And they get in it and they realize, oh my gosh, this is, this is a lot harder than I thought. Hold him up. Get back! Fight it! See what happened right there? They got turned around. What should they have done? Just, just turn around and the bad guy's now the front guy. It's hard, isn't it? This is the strainer. This is everybody's favorite part. If you get stuck on a strainer, I don't care how strong you are, you cannot pull yourself off of it, okay? Oh, you do not want to go under. You go under it, you die. Swim, 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 keep swimming. Keep swimming. There you go. Definitely a little bit more difficult than I thought it was gonna be. Pretty tired, but I do. I feel like if I ever needed this, this, this training, I, I have it in the bank. Y'all wanna talk a little bit more or y'all wanna figure out where you're going? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Nathan Lavender, a lot of game wardens, a lot of people that work for us grew up, it's their dream. So it's truly when they graduate today, when they get that assignment, it's a dream come true for them. Zachary Stevenson, Duval County. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Every person that graduates from this academy gets to serve a mission. It's the mission of protecting the natural resources of Texas helping the communities that they live in, responding during some of Texas' darkest hours. But that core mission of protecting our national resources, I mean, what could be more important? Duval County, it's, it's very rural and, and pretty much the, the population pretty much doubles or triples uh, every deer season. It's a, it's a deer hunting county and that's, that's what it is and that's what it's known for. There's, there's no place to stop to get food around here either. You better pack a lunch or you won't have one. The moments that make up our lives don't all unfold the same way. Some happen by chance. Shoot something? Yes, I did. I got a green teal. Green wing teal. Green wing teal. Right step, step. Some only happen through hard work. Right step. And every so often, we get a little help along our journey. It was a great experience being able to do that duck hunt with my mom. You know, it, it was totally out of her element. And I, I don't know if I could get her into a pair of waders now, but I'm so thankful she got into a pair for me back then. <laughs> what are you feeling right now? Just pride. Just so happy for him. I'm so excited for his future and where he's going to go. I plan on retiring in this job. It's something I really love to do. All right, guys, state game warden, we're gonna do a quick compliance check. Uh, can everybody pull out their hunting license? Looks like you had a pretty good morning. Appreciate it, yes, sir. The same opportunities that were provided to me when I was a child, I wanna make sure those same opportunities are available for the next generation. And that's why I do what I do.
Bracken Cave is the largest single concentration of mammals on Earth. If you want to know what a little angel is, Mexican free-tailed bats, they can see in the dark, they can find their own baby out of 10 million babies up in a dome, if that ain't a miracle. Every, and every, it's like winning the lottery every night because mama comes home to you hanging up there on that ceiling in the pitch black. From March to October, bats are gonna eat tons of bugs. Those are primary agricultural pests in the area, so you got cotton bull moth or corn earworm moth. Because of that, farmers, one, don't have crop damage. Two, don't have to spray a lot of pesticides on their crops to kill those bugs. They're bad to come. Yeah. You sit there with your mouth hanging open, those bats eat the volume of two 747 jet airliners every night. So think of the ecology and how wonderful. All he wants to do is live in the ground, be left alone, and eat our insect population for us. But in the early 2000s, a very large property that surrounded the property that Bat Conservation International owned was purchased by a large development company. So development was encroaching on all that and you had street lights that were gonna be within 100 yards of the cave and that would screw up the bats being able to navigate. And this was the, the last piece of property that was supposed to be developed. They were going to put 3,600 homes on 1,500 acres. Bat Conservation International and the Nature Conservancy recognized that this was really an existential threat to the long-term viability of Bracken Cave. Bats were going to be falling on people's patios, and the bats were going to lose. Finally, we were able to get traction with the landowner, with the city of San Antonio, and a partnership with Bat Conservation International to raise private dollars to help acquire what we call the Galo property, which is now divided between Bat Conservation International and the Nature Conservancy. We were, you know, working with our partner, Bat Conservation International, but, you know, we, we had to raise $10 million and it took us a long time to do that. He said, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you with that bat cave. And I cried. <laughs> then we named the preserve after him and it's known as Frank Klein's Cibolo Bluffs Preserve. And so here's an opportunity to protect recharge zones into the Edwards Aquifer to ensure that the quality of water going into that was going to be forever protected. We're on the recharge zone of the Edwards Aquifer, so if we have pristine land on top, you'll have pristine water underneath, and that's that's the game plan, kids. If you don't have water, you got nothing. So we did a lot of work on the golden cheek warbler, which is the only bird that nests exclusively in Texas. It nests in the Texas hill country in the oak juniper woodlands. If you let things grow and you keep things in balance, if you build it, they will come. And uh, it's just amazing. The amount of development is expanding. The issue in the hill country is that our riparian systems are extremely vulnerable to degradation. 
we all need some place to live. Development is necessary, development is important, but at the same time, preserving something is also important. So, it's been quite the journey, and little angels like the Mexican free-tailed bats have been a big part of it. Go to Bracken Bat Cave and watch that miracle. You'll be a different person. The Kemp's Ridley's, uh, this is a species that was nearing an extinction event. By 1985, there were maybe three or 400 of these things left. This species almost went extinct within a blink of an eye, and we know it was human activities that caused the decline without question. They're the smallest of the sea turtles. They're only found in a very small part of the world. It doesn't take a lot of human interaction to probably destroy it. The Kemp's Ridley's uh, a binational program to recover it, uh, this endangered species is probably one of the most uh, successful I've ever been uh, participated with. And it's one of the most involved and difficult. I mean, in 1947 or so, there were 120,000 of these turtles that would come ashore uh, and nest, many of them 30 or 40,000 at a time. And this program basically saved that species' life. For many years, it wasn't known where Kemp's Ridley's nest. It was a mystery. It wasn't until 1960s, Dr. Henry Hildebrand discovered a film that was uh, shot by a Mexican engineer that showed an estimated 40,000 Kemp's Ridley females nesting on this small stretch of beach near the village of Rancho Nuevo in Tamaulipas, Mexico. When biologists began to go to the beach, however, they found that the numbers of turtles nesting had declined tremendously. Well, you have to understand too, well, I can, particularly in uh, all on this, the uh, nesting beaches, it's a pretty poor area. They could get a dollar an egg, and then the turtle cells could feed the family for a week. It was pretty important. And, and trying to get people to want to conserve and not consume was a major undertaking. There was a lot of years where not much survived that came on the beach. The decline was uh, so precipitous in the, in the 1970s, they came up with the concept of forming a secondary nesting colony of Kemp's Ridley turtles at Padral National Seashore so that if a political or an environmental catastrophe was to occur at that main nesting beach down in Mexico, there'd be this safe area in the U.S. where Kemp's Ridley's could nest and be protected. It started small as a concept in the 1970s where we received eggs, 22,507 eggs from Mexico. We had the first confirmed returnee from this project I saw here in 1996, 10 years after we began our first patrols looking for returns from that project. Okay, there's the egg cavity with the eggs. So there's about 100. One thing we found out years and years ago, from the years we started stocking or releasing at least 100,000 hatchlings a year, uh, you could start to see the population build. So in the years we were getting up to like a million or close, I mean, we know we had some giant, giant impacts then. What accelerated this recovery of this species more than anything else, all the science that we did, all the volunteers we had have had a positive impact, but this one thing has done more 
to recover temporary sea turtles than anything else, and that's Viagra. They used to say, a turtle egg and a shot of tequila, and I'm ready to go. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was what was reality. And it was to the point where there was a time when they actually backed up 18-wheel tractor trailers into the edge of the dunes and were loading turtle eggs on as fast as they collect them. That's really what, that's really what almost destroyed, over that period of time, almost destroyed it. And so they literally put out posters with women in lingerie uh, holding a Viagra pill and a, a turtle egg and saying, this will do more than this, but it apparently worked because all of a sudden, all of our efforts down in Mexico with our partners there to save uh, eggs, they started bearing fruit. Today we're here at Padre Island National Seashore. We have a large group of people here today, all excited to come out and support the sea turtles and see the return back into the Gulf. Take a picture. Thank you. Even tinier than you are. <laughs> so cute. He is really cute. They're probably like babies. They are little babies. They're only a couple hours old. The public has always been involved in, to some extent, in our releases of Kemp's Ridley Hatchlings at Padre Island National Seashore. With the advent of social media, then the messages spread and our attendance at these releases really shot up. So now it's typically hundreds to more than a thousand people. We hold about, about 20 public releases each year, sometimes more than that, sometimes a little less. It all depends on the schedule of the turtles. When I see the BBC turtles, they are just the culmination of everything that we have done this year. That is our success story, that we were able to protect them from eggs into developing hatchlings. And once they hit the water and go back out into the Gulf of Mexico, it just warms my heart. And you hear a great cheer come up from the audience, and it's a really cool uh, scene to be a part of. That's it. <laughs> We're really thrilled because great strides have been made. The numbers nesting here have increased dramatically. But we haven't won the game, so to speak. It's going to take more years of effort to fully recover the species. Uh, this last 40 years has frankly been remarkable. When you think back in 1985, there were literally 300 of these animals possibly left alive. Uh, and now, uh, and I think it was 2011, uh, about, about this time of year, uh, almost 4,000 Kemp Release turtles came up on the beach. That was the first time that it happened since 1947. So to go from almost gone to on the road to recovery is remarkable. I, I don't know of any other species that we've done that for anywhere in this country. Wish you could spend more time with nature? Well, every month you can have the great outdoors delivered to you. Since 1942, Texas Parks and Wildlife Magazine has been the outdoor magazine of Texas. Every issue is packed with outstanding photography and writing about the wild things and wild places of this great state. And now, Texas's best outdoor magazine is available as an app. It's just that easy. Texas Parks and Wildlife Magazine, your connection to the great outdoors.
This series is supported in part by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, conserving the wild things and wild places of Texas thanks to members across the state. Additional funding is provided by Toyota. Your local Toyota dealers are proud to support outdoor recreation and conservation in Texas. Toyota, let's go places.